So today we've come to visit Angus, who has a very unique and rare collection of what we call grey frame BSAs. Two very special production bikes, but also two very unique and rare prototype bikes. So, Angus, talk us through it. Thanks, John. Yes, yeah, so I have a collection of grey frame BSAs, and these were primarily produced and manufactured between January and May 1971. And the, interesting, the most interesting fact, really, is that they weren't intended to be grey. So BSA were restyling the whole range for 1971, and the intention was that the frames would be silver to try and mimic the titanium frames of the uh, BSA Works motocrossers at the time. However, uh, to get manufacturing off quickly, uh, the plant manager went out and bought some dull grey frames second-hand from the MOD, cheap and all of a sudden in January they started dipping the frames in this dove grey and initially uh, the dove grey frames were quite well received in America which was the the major market however once the grey frames started to age and, and uh, become dirty with regular use, use and get scratched etc um, it was found that they were very difficult to keep clean and, and started to lose their luster and so uh, under pressure from uh, mainly the American market, the factory then reverted to black frames from the end of May 1971. So literally these bikes were produced on a sort of five, six month window, is that it? That's correct, the frame? Yeah. yeah. There are a few early examples in June that were grey framed and later bikes, the first black frame ones sometimes had grey shocks, so there's a bit of a okay. mix and match. Yeah, yeah. But the, the changeover happened between um, sort of end of May, early June in, seven, in 71. So it was a very short window of grey frame production. So rare bikes range. indeed. Yep. And what have we got here then? Two perfect examples. Uh, so firstly, um, here we've got a fairly rare 750 Lightning. So this is the A70 Lightning. And this was produced between June and August 1971. The very early ones were grey framed, and when I purchased this, although it was in a state, the, the shocks were grey. So I thought I was justified in actually restoring it with a grey frame. And Lightning's normally only 650cc. Only so 650, these... and they uh, produced the 750 version to homologate the 750 twins for AMA flat track racing in, in North America, where the factory riders were screaming out for a 750 to compete with the Harley 750 V twins, etc. at the time. Okay. So they produced 202 of these wow. between June and August. The intention was to continue with the 750 Lightning in 1972, but obviously due to all the factory's financial situation, a 71 war on, that never happened. Okay, so is this an American spec model or is this a UK? The, this is an American spec model, so it's a smaller tank. Uh, the U, the, the, there wasn't really a UK no. version of the A70, they, all, they were all exported. Okay. It's, some of them have been re-imported. And this colour scheme then, was this unique to this the, particular the, year or in terms of it's, the orange? It's, uh, it's not unique to the year. The, um, this is Etruscan bronze over white, and Etruscan bronze was used in 72 as well, but okay. um, as a single block colour. So we've got a beautiful 750 twin cylinder. Yep. And this one, three cylinder. Rocket Three, more, more well known um, yep. as it came out in late 68. Um, but for 71, as well as the, the grey frame, it was totally restyled. So this is the, the Mark II. Um, it's again, one of 200 five-speed factory bikes that were built to homologate the five-speed box, gearbox for the Daytona races. Racing. Yep. Okay. Um, but other than that, it's a, a, a standard Mark II export Rocket Three, where obviously the, the, the distinguishing feature is that they replaced the bread bin tank with uh, this teardrop tank and chromed it as well. And actually the tank is um, an export tank from the twins from um, 69 or so. Uh, where they slightly modified it and adap adapted it for the Rocket 3 for the restyling. And that's the reason why that one carries the sort of older style badges compared to the... That, that's correct. Um, so yes, the, the Lightning 
carries the badges that were designed for the 71 range that you saw on other models. Um, but yes, because they used the older tank and adapted it for this, they had to retain the, the big old style star badges, which obviously a lot of people do prefer, which, which actually gave it a distinctive look as well. But it's great to see these two examples side by side, showing that particular moment in time when the grey frame existed with that colour scheme for the export market. They do look stunning together. I mean, That's right, two 750 BSAs um, manufactured you know, within a short space of time in the, for the same model year, but totally different bikes altogether. Okay, so now let's move on to these two bikes, which are very, very special machines. These are prototype machines. So Angus, talk us through these. Yes, thanks, John. So um, the intention in 1971 was to introduce uh, a totally new modern model. And in the case of BSA, this was the Fury. Um, Triumph were also intending to introduce the same model as the Bandit, which a lot of people also know of. Um, there were a handful of bikes in development initially in 68, 69, and then there were a number built for pre-production testing purposes in early 71. Uh, but a lot of those um, examples don't survive. And um, due to the financial difficulties that the factory found itself in, in mid to late 71 and onwards, it uh, actually never officially stated uh, that it was dropping this model, but it, it just said it, it wouldn't be produced for 1971. So the intention was then that they would release it in 1972. Uh, ultimately, of course, uh, the factory just went downhill financially and so um, it, never, it never happened. So there are relatively few examples of these uh, that still survive. By, by my count from my records, there's 17 or 18. This one to me is, is particularly uh, special because firstly, this bike actually kicked off my interest in the grey framers because after the factory had closed and BSA had become amalgamated into Norton Villiers Triumph, in 1978, there was an article in Motorcycle News where uh, it showed Peter Valonslow of Valonslow Motorcycles in Birmingham, which was the, the biggest BSA dealer in Birmingham and close to the factory, um, describing this bike which he had in the showroom. And this is actually uh, the bike used at the launch of the 1971 range at a lavish do at the Royal Lancaster Hotel in London on the 10th of November 1970. And this was the bike that was there. However, this bike isn't all what it seems because although it looks complete, there are actually no, in no internals in the motor. So it's purely a, a show to publicize the model. And there were uh, two or three others also produced in a, in a similar fashion to promote the model, but not actually runners. Did you know that before you bought it? Or I did. when you kicked it over? <laughs> no, no, it, you won't kick this over because right. the kickstart shaft on this is wooden. Right. Um, um, but what I wanted to do was, was I'd always been interested in the grey framers and particularly f Furies, especially from the original 1978 um, article um, and ultimately I managed to purchase this from Vail in 1992 and the intention was at the time was to first of all see if we could find the necessary parts to complete this motor and make this into a, a running example uh, and this is what started my grey frame collection. So over a number of years uh, I did take this to events and generated quite a lot of interest. I also um, managed to uh, make acquaintance with other aficionados of Fury and Bandits. One in particular uh, was Tony Page, who was well known in, in, in these circles, particularly for uh, Triumph, Triumph Bandits and BSA Fury that, that he owned. And uh, we started to, to collaborate, and he was willing to uh, provide some parts from his stash that he'd collected over a number of years. However, we were lucky enough to come across another gentleman that was also collecting parts in the late 70s when some of these were available from dealers that had taken uh, stashes of spurs from the factory when the factory closed down. And I purchased his stash of parts having seen them and, and examined them in his loft. 
And when we got, so when I brought, brought them home and eventually um, sorted them, we realised we probably had e enough parts to actually build another one wow. separately. <laughs> and so um, we started on a, a journey, primarily myself and Tony Page, whereby we collaborated so that we could pull all the spurs that we had um, to the extent where initially I helped him complete his Triumph Bandit, which is one that he built up around an experimental motor from the factory. And then following that, I built up this Fury in Street Scrambler form, the SS. And we were then able to leave the original show bike uh, as, a, as a piece of history as it was at the launch, uh, still in uh, you know, factory and unrestored condition. So that's a real time capsule, that one. The, this so is a, a time yeah. capsule, yeah. And, and this was the bike that was also in the publicity photos with model Karen Young, which were used at the time in magazines, etc. So that's how the, the collection has, has come about. It started with this bike. So other than the fact that these were prototypes and didn't go into production, what, can you talk through a little bit more of the engine on this? So that, that's the really interesting point on these, isn't it? What could have been? For the what could have been? So um, these bikes were designed as a 350 to capture the American market, the 350 market in, in America. And that was because that was the insurance ceiling for learners at the time. And Honda were carving out that market uh, and taking a huge share with the CB350 CB and CL350 models. And this was, was targeted to, to take some of that market share from, from Honda. And obviously it had to emulate you know, a much more modern design rather than the old fashioned you know, push rod designs. Mm. This was a new modern design incorporating uh, double overhead camshafts, uh, optional electric start. Uh, one thing that they didn't do um, was in incorporate a disc brake, which some people felt was a bit of a failing for the 71 range in general. Um, but they designed this twin leading conical hub, which they use across the range, which if set up properly is, is, is a good brake. So um, it, it, it was ver very, very you know, fairly and squarely aimed at um, competition against the, the Japanese, especially the Hondas. But it still retained, obviously, some of, some of the, the older approaches with maybe the brakes and also uh, vertically split cases. So, so the engine cases are you know, quite complex mm. and, and also, uh, in that respect, uh, are probably more prone to leak oil than, than the Hondas do <laughs> with the vertical cases. But, but obviously, it was a big step in, in the right direction. The frame was designed um, to, to replicate the, um, the strength of the triple racers. Uh, Rob North didn't design the frame as a lot of people think but it was certainly designed along the same lines. Um, they, they were using these modern paint colours as you can see so plum crazy on the fury, um, firecracker red and Etruscan bronze. Paint unfortunately faded very very badly in, in sunlight um, after a few months but luckily because this is a show machine and has been inside most of its life the factory colours have been retained, so we've been able to get a good match on that plum crazy, but it is a unique paint to, to the bike. So a lot of unique features of this bike, and, and obviously there's been a lot of articles written about the fact whether or not um, this might have saved the factory. We'll uh, never know. I, we'll never know. <laughs> I, personally, I don't think so, because they're in too much of a, a mess at the time, and although it might have sold well, I think they were worried about the fact that it hadn't had enough testing pre-production. It failed quality assurance on the pre-production batch, and they might have been um, left with a whole mound of warranty claims, mm. which they couldn't afford at the time. So I think that's why it was, it was slowly left to, um, to die on a shelf, unfortunately. So in terms of this particular one then, Angus, this is the Street Scrambler styling. I've just recently finished this, so it's all ready to go, um, and the, um, the next activity will be uh, a first start on it. Because I already had um, this show model, which is in the style of what they call the Roadster, uh, or the E35R Roadster. Uh, I decided to build this one up as the, the Street Scrambler, which was the other model, the other Fury yep. model that they were intending to, to offer. And uh, the differences being on the Street Scrambler is obviously the, the, the distinctive uh, part uh, is the high level black exhaust, but also um, it's got chrome guards rather than the painted guards, um, optional uh, different handlebars on it. But other than that, uh, it's exactly the same bike. 
but it just screams USA market, this it, one, it, doesn't it? It just it changes the, the star totally with the, with the high-level pipes. And, and what I've done with this one as well is um, electric start was optional on, on both of these. I, I've, I've fitted the electric start onto, onto this one, which is going to help with the first start, I'm sure. Which should be soon. We'll be able to see that on your YouTube channel. Uh, you will. So I, I run my, my own YouTube channel, channel under my name, Angus D. Campbell and BSA Power Set. Uh, the reason why I call it BSA Power Set is because the American brochure from which this is taken uh, from the front cover was known as the Power and the Glory and the, the whole range then became the Power Set range for 1971.